Hey everybody, it's Joe from greenlightsound.com and today we've got a tip on how to add some width to mono guitar parts, particularly lead guitar parts, guitar solos, that are lacking width because they're often recorded in mono and pans straight up the middle. So we can add a little bit of width to them using a really simple plugin, often on sale for $30 as most Wave plugins are, and this is the Abbey Road Studios Real ADT. And this was used famously back in the 60s on a bunch of Beatles recordings, on vocals, on guitar parts. And what it really does is add a little bit of width by having, in the real version, a couple tape machines set up that provided a sort of a pre-delayed signal and a post-delayed signal in addition to the centered normal signal. And that little bit of variability in the timing of the part, plus the variations from slowing down or speeding up the tape machine, that's what these various speed controls do, really help create some of that width with kind of a unique tone here. So the first thing I want to do is bypass the plugin. You can see it is off now. I'll move it out of the way here. The channel it's on is muted. It's on a separate bus here. So what we're going to do is listen to the guitar part without any of this real ADT on it. You get the idea. It sounds great, great playing, nice tone, everything's nice, but it's a little bit narrow up the middle as it is panned. So we create that width by sending a copy of that lead guitar part to this bus that I just call Lead Reel. I'll turn that bus on now. I'll engage the plugin. This is its default setting. I like to change the default setting. What I like to do is take my ADT1 here, pan it hard left, boost the gain all the way up. The center section, which is the source signal, I like to bring all the way down. We don't need any of that in here, we just want the width. I go over to the ADT2 channel, I pan that one hard right, boost it up all the way. So we basically got our ADT1 panned hard left, our ADT2 panned hard right, and the very speed is whatever its default setting is. So that little bit of fluctuation that's happening here, which we can control there with the range, or we can even move the very speed controls if we wanted to. And that's it, really easy setup. Pan hard left, pan hard right, boost it up. Now I'm going to blend in this lead reel channel as it plays. And I like it to be a little bit subtle. We can really push it and get really obvious effects from it. But the subtleness is nice. It adds that sense of width without sounding overpoweringly stereo. I'm just going to mute it on and off as it plays. Check out the mute control on the channel. And of course, we could really push it. But like I said, I like to bring it down a little bit, make it a little bit more subtle, unless we're going for a real obvious double tracked effect. Now, instead of doing my setup here, you could also go over to the presets that are included with this one. And I think there's a guitar, there's two different guitar presets that I liked. Guitar movement here, which is kind of set up the middle. kind of like a flanging phasing effect and then we've got two guitars are better than one here and you can see in that one that the LFO rate and range for the very speeds a little bit different so you've seen those move at a little bit different pace warm guitar phasing here That's cool, let's go to flanger. So lots of different really cool guitar effects we can have. But again, if you just go to the factory default, pan these hard, bring this down, put these two sliders up all the way. We 
we get the width we're looking for, and we can dial it into taste. So there it is, really easy way with a very inexpensive plugin to get some width to your guitar parts, particularly mono guitar parts and guitar solos. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already, so we can keep you in the loop as to what's coming up next, and I'll see you in the next one.